Okay, here we are. We are going through Holy Week, the last week of the life and ministry of Jesus on planet Earth. And today is Friday, so it's Good Friday. And Good Friday, I do a service Good Friday evening, and we talk about the death of Jesus, and we talk about all of the verses about the death of Jesus. Many times, Good Friday services are celebrated from noon until three, because they say, you know, that would be the hour, you know, that Jesus died, and 12, you know, 12 o'clock to three, he's on, the, he's on the cross, he dies at three o'clock, and by six o'clock, he's in the tomb. So, good enough, but if Jesus is dead for three days and three nights, if he dies on Friday, it's Friday night, Saturday night, and then Sunday morning. Like, this is only two and a half days. But people say, oh, yes, but you don't take into consideration that the Jewish people, their day starts at, at least the biblical Jewish people in the day, that their day starts at six o'clock in the morning, which makes absolute sense to me that your day starts when the sun comes up, not the way that we do it. We have our day start at midnight, in the middle of the night, our day starts. So, Go to bed at 9, set your alarm at 12, and the, the day is starting. It's kind of crazy how that works. But we do it at midnight, and they would do it at 6. So even if you count it that way with 6, it still doesn't make sense. It still doesn't really work. You can't really make the three days and three nights work. And Jesus said in Matthew 12 that it would be three days and three nights. He's very specific. That is three days and three nights. It's hard to make that work. So what's going on here in Holy Week? Well, it's really Wednesday that Jesus does the Last Supper and he's betrayed. And then Wednesday night, from the time it gets dark, all through the night, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, they are interrogating him in a religious interrogation. They are trying to find guilt. They are trying to find something to cause him to be put to death, according to the Jewish law. But the Jewish law doesn't account for civil law. They just can't kill the guy. So they need to bring it to the civil authorities. So they find all night long they're trying to do it, and they bring false witnesses, and nothing can work out. They can't just find, they can't find the guy guilty. So uh, they get a couple of witnesses to collaborate some stuff. But what they can find is that Jesus is calling himself a king. And if he's calling himself a king, then he's violating, supposedly, uh, Roman law in that there can only be one king. There can't be a number king. So they're going to bring him before Pilate in the day, Thursday. They're going to bring him to Pilate and ask Pilate to kill him. And Pilate's going to be like, I don't want to do this. So he's, he's going to send him to Herod. Herod's going to be like, I ain't going to be the guy to kill him and sends him back to Pilate. Well, Pilate doesn't want to do it, but Pilate gets himself between a rock and a hard place, and he tries to release Jesus. That doesn't work. His wife tells him, don't do it, and he's like, I won't do it, honey. And sure enough, you know, he he does it anyway. He gets himself in a, stuck in this political situation, and he's in an argument with the Jews and puts a sign on there, he's the king of the Jews. He said, don't say he's the king of the Jews. He said, I wrote what I wrote. He's the king of the Jews. So Jesus is crucified. He's crucified on the Thursday. Crucified Thursday, noontime, about right, noontime, three o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon, he breathes out his last breath, says it is finished. Again, on Good Friday, they often do those seven words, the seven last words of Jesus, and not words, it's sort of phrases, the seven last phrases of Jesus. It is finished, I thirst, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. So all of those things, um, <clears throat> happened at that time. So Jesus dies, they take him, they put him in the tomb, and by six o'clock, the thing's sealed, the thing is done. So that's Thursday night. So he's in the tomb Thursday night, he's in the tomb Friday night, he's in the tomb Saturday night, Sunday morning, he's risen from the dead. What time Sunday morning? I don't know exactly, but Sunday morning, he comes back to life. So uh, what's going on now? So it's Friday, and then tomorrow's Saturday. What's going on? He's in the tomb. Nothing's happening. He's dead. And they have all gone back to their houses. Now, the Passover is always on the 14th of Nisan. Always. It's just always on that day. And following the Passover, there's a high holy Sabbath the next day. 
So if it's on a Monday, should the 14th of Nisan fall on a Monday, the next day, Tuesday, would be a high Holy Sabbath. So it's a Wednesday. It's, 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 you have the, the Sabbath, right, the, the Passover on the Wednesday. The Thursday, that's the, um, uh, the high Holy Day. And then you have another day after that. So you have the regular Sabbath after that. It's kind of like, how would it work? Uh, kind of like if the 4th of July falls on a Saturday, right? And then, but you get the Monday as well. Well, what if it falls on a Friday? Then you get the, the, the Friday off, and then maybe you get, the, you get the Monday off as well, depending on what your employer does. But you know how sometimes they add extra days, but that's not the day that it happened, but they're adding an extra day uh, because that's the week of. So kind of the same thing. So you have <clears throat> you have the regular Passover. Then you have a couple of Sabbaths. You have the special Sabbath and you have the regular Sabbath. So nobody's doing anything during those days. Nobody's doing anything at all. So um, they come to get Jesus on the Sunday morning after the, after the Sabbath is over. They come to get they come to get Jesus. So. Um, this idea of the three days and the three nights, again, in Matthew, Jesus talks about it. But it's also talked about, there's a picture of it. Jesus said, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, right? So, or the, he didn't say a well, he said the belly of a great fish. So will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Well, back in Genesis 22, a passage that atheists love to uh, look at, it says, sometime later, Abraham, uh, God tested Abraham, and he said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And he said, take your son, take your son. The father needs to take the son. The father's taking the son. Your only son. Well, he had another son, Ishmael, but this is the son of promise. So take your son, your only son, whom you love. God so, sent, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, whom he loved. Take your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Well, the region of Moriah is where Jesus was crucified. And sacrifice him there as a burnt offering, completely on the mountain that I'll show you. So you need to go to the area of Moriah, where Jesus would also be crucified, and you need to take your son, you need to take your only son, and you need to sacrifice him there. And so early in the morning, Abraham got up, he loaded his donkey, he took two of his servants and Isaac, and when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, that's significant, on the third day, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance, and he said to the servants, you stay here, uh, with the donkey while the boy and I go over there. We will worship and we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering. He placed it on his son Isaac. Isaac is carrying his sentence of death on his own back. He's carrying the wood of his sacrifice. He's carrying the wood of his, bat, uh, wood of his death on his back. And he carried the fire and the knife, the implements of his death. And as the two of them went together, Isaac said, Father, and he said, yes, he said, the fire and the wood are here, but where's the lamb? And Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering, and they went there. Well, anyway, Abraham doesn't do it. Angel intervenes, and then there's a substitutionary death. There's a substitutionary death of a lamb. The lamb takes his place. So Jesus is also the substitutionary lamb. So this is a picture of Jesus. But it tells us in the book of Hebrews that um, this is a picture of Jesus and that Abraham is a picture of the Father. So think about it. God the Father, Abraham, takes the Son, his only Son, and he goes to the region of Moriah, where Jesus was crucified, to sacrifice him completely. Now, it's three days. So what Hebrews informs us about is that the son was dead in the eyes of the father for three days, three nights, as they're traveling. So the whole time they're traveling, the father's like, the kid's dead. And so in his eyes, he's dead. Now, he also believed that God could raise him from the dead and believed that God would raise him from the dead. And so we know that God can raise Jesus from the dead, and he did raise Jesus from the dead. But it's Friday. He's in the tomb. Tomorrow, Saturday, he's in the tomb. Sunday morning. He will rise again. So there we go. Holy week. Hey, bless you guys.